Hello and welcome to set 7 of 9 hours, 9 person, 9 doors. Now I have to confess I was trying to record this yesterday but it was uh, about half 1 in the morning because I assumed I would feel uh, quite awake. Um, but I got to one puzzle and it took me literally half an hour to do. And then there was a puzzle right after it as well which also took me another half an hour and my mind uh, it completely melted at that point, so I thought, no, I'll start again. It's 25 past 1 in the afternoon now, so I should have a much fresher mind and more knowledge of what to do. So, <coughs> Yes, the door is open. Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. A seemed to share his excitement. Alright, Junpei, why don't you go get Jun now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Santa snorted. Why do I need to do that? Even if it shuts and we know how to solve the puzzle now, we could just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Should all three of us go and collect Jun then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Jumpy handle it. He still seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down on the stairs petul petulantly. So you are only interested in being contrary. A sighed with an air of long s of an air s Oh, god damn it. <laughs> A sighed with the air of a long suffering parent. Alright, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. He gave a quick nod to Ace and Santa and dashed off down the stairs. Before long, he was back on the first floor next to the conveyor bell in June. As he drew closer, she stood up slowly. Are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. June blushed. He wasn't sure if she was embarrassed or still feverish. Just to make sure, he reached down and put his hand against her forehead. Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had earlier, but still wasn't down to what seemed normal to him. Are you sure you're alright? He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops. I, I meant warrior. June giggled. He wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but... Seeing her smile again made Junpei feel at ease. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, then she really was feeling much better. He gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. Let's go. Go where? Oh right, I didn't tell you. We get the, we got the exit open, so... Great. Let's go. Oh, she doesn't look happy about it. <laughs> June clapped her hands and nodded urgently. As they walked back toward the exit, Junpei noted Santa sitting on the stairs. He was, however, holding something in his right hand and staring at it with a strange expression. Junpei and Jun slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? Santa answered without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah, the kid was cute as a button. June cocked her head, confused. She was only about an inch tall then? Santa glared at her. Ah, uh, ah, uh, sorry. Uh, I guess an inch is a little large for a button. See, I don't like it when people make jokes about serious stuff like that. <laughs> I know it's something. You know, it's just in a game, but I understand why Santa just glared at her. Probably more like a half inch. Yeah, Jumpe, stay out of it. <laughs> Santa didn't smile or laugh. He simply turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. This sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at June who shook her head. She didn't know either. Have you ever heard the story of the two Santa Clauses? It goes that a long time ago there were two Santas. One of them wore white and the other one wore black. The white Santa gave presents to good kids, and the black Santa played tricks on bad kids. They went on like that for a while, but eventually the Black Santa's tricks started to get worse and worse. Pretty soon the White Santa couldn't stand it anymore, and he stabbed the Black Santa to death. When he stabbed the other Santa, the White Santa got blood all over his clothes. And that's why these days his clothes are red. You can see that the red is all that's left of the Black Santa. Jinpei was silent. He could think of nothing to say. I know, he's quite depressing about Christmas. June was staring at Santa, sadness plain on her face. He continued. I wonder 
Which side do I am? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I seem to yawn a lot when I'm making these. <laughs> the white center or the black center? <clears throat> Alright, let's go. Santa stood up suddenly, his downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture back in his pocket and headed back up the stairs, taking them two at a time. Junpei and Jun looked at one another. There was nothing they could think of to say. Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving, come on. Santa's voice echoed across from the room above them. They nodded and followed him quickly up the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. He was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. The door had shut, but it wasn't cause for concern. Junpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. I wouldn't like it if the door closed, because then it's like, well, what if there's another contraption we've got to do, or if it's like, oh, well, you've used your chance. There are no more chances to go. I don't really think, you know, the whole safety thing through. In single file, they walk through. After walking for nearly 15 feet, they found themselves in front of a metal door. It opened easily enough, and they passed through it as well. A new room stretched out before them. Ah, oh, this room. <laughs> I don't like this room. Maybe just because I was tired, but this is a room that has two really difficult puzzles for me. <laughs> is this a warehouse? No, I believe that this is the cargo room. This must be where they store all of this vessel's freight. There are wooden crates everywhere. Wonder how old they are. Junpei, Ace, and June had stopped unconsciously, pausing to take in their new surroundings. Santa's voice broke through their momentary trance. Well, we probably ought to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going. Okay, I know how to. I know how to get out. Or at least I know what to do at the start. See these white sacks. They all contain ID cards of everybody that's here. I would search them, but they don't really, um... What's that? It's a card. It has a headshot on it. A headshot? Yeah. I'm not really sure what purpose this could possibly serve. But yeah, they don't really say much about what they are. They just say, oh, it's a headshot. And we have to collect all nine of them. Aces. Because there is a a blue box behind this that we have to unlock. And in each box oh, I'll, I'll let you find out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So was it the other three? Why did I find the other three? I don't know what's in these barrels, touch them by their weight, perhaps a liquid of them. Oh yeah. It's not in these ones. These boxes. We searched all the boxes, there's nothing in them. Oh yeah, there we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8. Um. Is it by this? Do you have one next to it? So I need the key. All the boxes have numbers on them. Did it? Oh. Ace went down and picked up something. He had been, uh, been sitting next to the box. Junpei, take a look at this. Cards. There we go, yeah. That's the next one. Now we use the cards on the boxes. They finally collected all nine picture cards. All that remained was to insert the cards into the slots at the front of each box. Junpei stared at the cards in his hands. Ace peered over his shoulder at them. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Yeah, see, I thought this was going to be a puzzle, like, I, I couldn't remember who was who, like, I know 7 is 7, and Ace is 1, and Santa's, I think, is 3, and the ninth man is obviously 9, but, no, it just goes straight past it. It's quite a shame, because I mean, that would have been a, an interesting puzzle. Junpei gave him a look. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course I do. It's really obvious. You just match our numbers to the numbers on the boxes. So, for instance, the card with a picture of Ace on it goes into box 1. The card with a picture of Snake on it goes into box 2, and so on. Ah, I see. Junpei thought he might have imagined it, but he could have sworn Ace stiffened. 